good evening, or should I say good morning, because uh, it's about half two in the morning and we are at Canool Hill. I'm trying to get a shot that I've been after for, for years, but I've just never been, I had the time or got the right conditions. And today I have got the right conditions. The weather's been a bit of a nightmare. It's a lot of high clouds forecast, but I, I was looking at the sky and it's kind of not as, not really causing an issue. It's just a tiny bit of high cloud right in the distance, but yeah, I think I could be able to shoot through it almost. So yeah, so the plan is to get the Milky Way. The Milky Way core is going to line up perfectly with the famous Canoole Hill viewpoint. Um, it's a very, very famous viewpoint. I've been here with Orion. I've got a nice picture of Orion. I'll put that up now. Um, but I've been dreaming of getting a Milky Way one over this viewpoint. I've never ever seen a Milky Way picture over Canoole, Canoole Hill. So I'm sure I'll be the first to do that and try and get a good quality one as well. Um, I have a, I'm having a bit of a nightmare with batteries so I won't be shooting too much on the Sony uh, just because my batteries keep getting exhausted. I've gone through three batteries because earlier on I was getting some star trails and I got some moon pictures. I'll show them as well. Uh, but I didn't film them because I was just trying to get them. I was just trying to learn different techniques for photography uh, earlier on. So I've yeah I've been out almost all night. I'm, I've, I'm running out of batteries, so I'm going to save my batteries for imaging this, so I'll shoot more on the phone. Um, but yeah, so the plan is, it's just a wee bit low just now, it's going to rise up soon. I've used that app again, uh, Photographers Ephemeris, to track the Milky Way and see what location it's going to be in the sky. And it will, the core is slightly, is going to go perfectly over, over the viewpoint. You can just see it very slightly now, but it's still just a wee bit too close to the, the cliff face. I need it out a bit just so it makes the image a bit more pleasing to the eye. Um, really mild as well, it's about five degrees, which is brilliant. Um, so yeah, that's about it. So hopefully, fingers crossed, I get a good, good image. Um, shooting with the Sony A7S and the Samyang 14mm 24. I've got the Samyang 14mm as well to try and get a wide open shot. Um, so yeah, we'll see how we go. But I'll shut up because <laughs> I don't want the batteries to die because these batteries die, I'm knackered. So, we've got another hour of darkness as well, so we only have to wait another hour uh, until it's the highest point in the sky. It's the highest point in the sky just before twilight, pretty much. So, we shall see. Best of luck. So the past few months as well, I've just been learning a new technique of making the images a bit more uh, professional and more slicker and easier to print and just higher quality is stacking. I'm stacking multiple foreground images and that just reduces the noise. Noise is pretty much just pixels. So when you're shooting in the dark, sometimes the pixel pixels don't get picked up by the sensor and, the and through the image it just comes as a wee black pixel. So, and noise is random as well, so if you stack loads of foreground images, all the dead pixels that you sometimes get whilst shooting at night uh, slowly get filled in because they're random throughout every image. So if you take multiple foreground exposures um, and stack them together, it reduces the so-called noise. Uh, I have got a sky tracker uh, and I opt on to track the night sky, but I've not brought it with me because, to be honest, I can't be bothered. Um, it takes a lot of effort to try and polar a line. I can't even see Polaris to polar a line. So it's a bit of effort to track the night sky. And with the 1.4 um, Samyang lens, it picks up so much detail because it's such a fast uh, lens. So I don't really need to stack, but I'll get better exposures if I did stack, but I've not brought that today. So yeah, I'm going to stack about seven foreground images, stack them together, and that'll reduce the noise and make a nice clean foreground. And then one just simple, sky um, exposure. There we go. So there's the famous canoe tower, tower there. And you can just see the Milky Way core straight down there. Look at that 
Milky Way core live on camera. Hope you can make it out. I can make it out just now. There we go, look at that. See, you can see all the dust and gas lanes here. Beautiful. Stretches away up there. Southeast just now. And that'll rise up like that. Uh, that'll go. Whoosh. And that'll rise from there to about there, and then it'll get washed out by twilight. Yeah, there's a view just now. It is a very steep cliff here, so I'll have to watch. But yeah, beautiful to see the Milky Way core back in the night sky. Right, I'm going to let you into a little secret as well. So for the sky exposures, um, I normally, with this lens I normally use 10 to 15 seconds, but to make the sky exposure really pop, and to be honest, I could not be on a photography shoot, astrophotography shoot, without this little gadget to make the sky really pop. It is the Alan Wallace Starglow filter, and by far it is the best purchase I have made astrophotography wise it just makes stars pop it gives a dreamy look to the night sky i could not go on an astrophotography shoot without this filter um, they're made by case um, partner and case partnered with alan wallace who's a you know brilliant astrophotographer he got me into pretty much landscape astrophotography i used to want to do astrophotography but didn't really know the genre then i watched his videos and I found the genre that I was into, but he made the, he collaborated with Case Filters and made this filter. I don't know what it's made of, um, but it just if you hover it in front of the lens when you're doing your sky exposure, it just makes stars pop. So you'll see most of my pictures on my website, or my page, or whatever. How you use them is, I'll just move this around. So you take your normal foreground pictures, la di da, and then when you're doing your sky exposure, you can get filter holders for it, but what I do is just, as Alan Wallace does in his video, shake it like a Stargle filter, which you just kind of pop it in like that. And that's all you do. And depends how long you hold it for, the strength of the stars glow, pretty much. Uh, but what I normally do is take my foreground exposures and then just pop that in solid for 10 seconds for a single exposure and then you merge them together. But yeah, literally just hover it in front of the lens and yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. I can't ha highly recommend it enough. I can't go on an astrophotography shoot without this. Any other picture just looks dead without it. So um, hats off to Alan Wallace, he, you know, he's doing good things in the um, astrophotography industry. So yeah, I can't recommend it enough. Alan Wallace, Stargle filter, case filters, um, yeah, brilliant, brilliant. So I'll be using this for this shot so you'll see the stars pop just a wee bit.
and I've just now attached the Samyang 14mm f2.8 it's quite a bulbous chunky lens and I'm going to try and get a huge almost panorama view you can't really see because I'm filming on my phone but I'm going to use this to try and get as much of the night sky in as possible because the Milky Way is at its highest just now so I'll try and get that in um, it, fantastic lens so it's a 14mm on a full frame so it's huge so let's try and see if we can get a huge big landscape picture Well that's me pretty much done, um, I have to watch because there is a cliff here, that's me pretty much done for tonight, the Milky Way is at its highest over there, I don't know if you can make it out on the camera, um, twilight's just starting, um, well it's, it's pretty much due now so it takes a few minutes to kick in, so from now on the Milky Way will start to fade into the daytime. I've took hundreds of shots, <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of shots of just everything, everything from the 14mm to the 24mm obviously, um, loads of pictures, all the same viewpoint but just wider angles and different looks of it, portrait, landscape whatsoever, um, but yeah that's about it really, it's been a success I think, so thankfully the high cloud didn't stay and it was, well it didn't cause any bother whatsoever. So I'm glad that happened. It is about, well it's just gone 4 o'clock in the morning now. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the wee video. I'll pop obviously the pictures up. Um, obviously check out that Alan Wall star filter, star glow filter. So yeah, if I am doing stuff with the computer, I'll hand over to myself now. So thank you for watching whilst I've been outside. Okay, so we're at the laptop now. I'm going to show you how I'd stack together all the images to make a star trail. I was at a golf course, just near Schoon pretty much, and I didn't video any because I didn't know how it was going to turn out, but I, I think it turned out alright. I took about 600 images, so I'm going to stack them together and make a nice star trail image. So what we do is download this app, it's called Star Stacks. Um, it's free for every laptop, easy to use. So what we do is we go to open images, find my, here's all my pictures. This is a quick way shift. All the way down, there's about 600, 600 images here. Open all them and then they'll all load up here. Do, 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 which is good. Oh gosh, how did I do this again? Right, so, right, so they're all loaded up. Make sure gap fillings selected, that just, in, if I've stopped the camera for any length of time to check the cameras, the program will automatically keep the star trails going, not just a star trail, then a wee gap, then more star trails. So that will keep going that. And then that is it, you just pop them all in, make sure it's gap filling, and what this program will do is freeze the foreground and just stack stack the stars, and then you'll see them start to make a star trail. So you go up to here, no you don't, you go to there, start processing, and as easy as that, you just all you do is just pretty much set a time lapse and going just in the direction you want and then pop it into star stacks like that and the program does everything for you and you can as you can see here that it's starting to make a star trail uh, the foreground will get very noisy because it's stacking multiple foregrounds on top of this so what i do uh, later in post-production is keep the sky and then just merge a, a single foreground image into the, into the picture so you've got a clean foreground and then the star trail in the back and that's pretty much it for a star trail so I'll pop the finished star trail up hopefully it turns out really good I'm quite confident with this one just hopefully there's not many airplanes and satellites because they sometimes ruin a good shot um, but yeah that's star trails so the program's been running for about five minutes just now and that's it just coming to an end now and you can see how how it stacks the images just together and just creates an awesome star trail 
you can see all the noise and the white dots, uh, white pixels, dead pixels in the foreground, but yeah, as I said, I'll edit them out. There we go, blending done, 677 images. Yeah, so I'll alter the highlights and the colours and all that sort of stuff uh, in Lightroom just to finish off the picture. So I've just loaded the Star Trail image up into Lightroom and I've just been mucking about with the highlights and stuff. It's always good taking the highlights down in a Star Trail image just because it, sometimes it blows out. See that? It was at normal and that's the highlights down. You just get a bit more detail in the stars. Um, I'm not entirely happy with the the um, composition but you know it'll do. I was just wanted to try try uh, test out a few things. So at least I know this works and I know what I'm doing but I'm quite happy with that. Some nice colours in it. Oh, the saturation a wee bit. Dehaze is always good for star trails. And I always just reduce the noise a wee bit. But yeah, I'm happy with that. It's not going to win any awards, but I think it's quite nice. So yeah, I'll show you the full image just now. When I finished the Star Trail as well, um, I knew the moon was sitting just behind me as well. So I tried to get a wee shot of the moon setting. But it was hard because I didn't have the Ioptron Sky Tracker. There's Shahali in there. Um, so as you can see, the nice images, and it had potential, but I didn't have the right equipment to track the um, the moon, and it was pitch black as well. So I was using the Sigma 150 to 600, and that doesn't do that great in lo in pitch black. So I think I took these shots at something stupid like 15,000 ISO or 20,000 ISO. So you can see the you know there's a lot of noise, and um, around the end edges there's a lot of burning that you get on the Sony's cameras so nice image but I don't think it really worked um, but hey ho that's how you learn eh? 